uh, there are some modifications I want to make to this Caterpillar tunnel and one of them is we want to build some end panels on it for uh, machinery access. So I'm going to show you the cat tunnel and just kind of explain a little bit about our construction methods on it. Oh, well, Daddy can't spend the sunnies, but you can spend them at school. Hey, everybody, Matt with a little cash homestead. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't hear what you said. I said I can't no more. Well, you can go back tomorrow, baby. This is Matt with a little cash homestead. We're walking over to one of our projects today. Everybody, Matt with a little cash homestead. So yesterday we were out here building on the Caterpillar tunnel. We had all the boughs and everything put in. And we have basically the whole frame of the tunnel put up. We're not going to put the plastic and stuff on yet. Uh, there are some modifications I want to make to this Caterpillar tunnel. And one of them is we want to build some end panels on it for uh, machinery access. So I'm going to show you the cat tunnel and just kind of explain a little bit about our construction methods on it. All right, so here is the Caterpillar Tunnel. Uh, this is a farmer's friend Caterpillar Tunnel. We bought the uh, Gothic Pro. So the Gothic Pro has these little 16-inch uh, extension kits on it. It also has wind bracing, and it also has the solid center purlin. So the bows are really easy to put together. Um, the building itself is quite a bit... I, I don't want to call it flimsy. Let me restate that. It is less it <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. it it wiggles more than the uh, gross band now the gross band building is a much larger building also a lot more costly building larger pipes uh, bigger screws heavier bolts uh, all of that stuff but this isn't meant to be permanent this is a, mo uh, a, a movable uh, system okay but we put this up now would it have been easier to put up if I hadn't plowed the ground first? Um, yeah, I probably would have. But we built this in a very similar method that we built the Grossman building. And that was we we uh, plumbed our ends. Okay, we put our purlin up. And then we went back through and we plumbed each leg. Now, the legs without the wind bracing. So there are six bows. Three in the front and three in the end that have wind bracing on them. The other five bows, um, are there, they're in pretty good condition as far as being like on the Nat's ass plum. And I'm kind of picky um, because of my uh, career in, in building trades. So, you know, maybe I'm going a little bit further with this than it needs to be. But what we'll do is we will loosen that saddle clamp there on these center five purlins and allow the purlins to float in or slip into their plumb position. And then the plan that we have is to build some machinery doors on the end. If you take a look at the gross band, you'll see it has these large machinery doors. Um, this has no access points other than lifting the plastic up. So I've got machinery. I want to be able to use it. So we're gonna build a probably a five by seven uh, machinery door entrance in here. My uh, tractor, that sound you hear, is the neighbor with his leaf blower. Uh, we we finally have a neighbor on that side. The house was empty for for a long time, and now someone lives there, and he's doing his yard cleanup today. And we'll be doing some yard cleanup uh, today as well. Uh, we don't use a leaf blower. We use what I call the mulch maker, which is a four-in-one chipper shredder vac. It's an awesome tool for homesteading, guys. Um, but anyway, so we need to build machinery doors on the end of this, and I'm going to use some 5 by 7 9 mil tarps that I got at Harbor Freight. If you haven't seen that video of Harbor Freight for your homestead, I'll put an I-card to it right about here. And so that's the basics. Uh, also, uh, my version of this Farmer's Friend Caterpillar Tunnel has these upgraded um, holders for the plastic. So rather than wrap them around, they actually squeeze. They're kind of like a torsion spring um, where we have the coil, spring coil here. And then we have this part here, which supports the plastic. And by squeezing it, you release enough tension to allow you to move it around. Now, I put mine only on the... Um, bows with the cross braces 
And and then so um, we're going to try and get the machinery doors done. i got to get a little bit of material for that. And then we'll put the plastic on and the ropes. And we might even start filling this in with um, biomatter and yard debris. And uh, get get a, uh, a nice f uh, fertilizer primer down on it to help accelerate de that decomposition and get everything going in a nice manner for us on the inside of the Caterpillar Tunnel. That's what we got going so far. Hey, Bill. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. This is Matt with the Low Cash Homestead. We're using our mulch maker, and we are grinding up leaves to go the inside of our Caterpillar Tunnel. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. Matt with the Low Cash Homestead. Uh, tonight in the garage, we're working on some components for a garden box. So working on another garden box, we've got uh, eight, nine, ten of them in the primary garden right now. We're going to build another small one. This one is made out of slab wood, and this is like really great slab wood. This is cedar slab wood. So I have some um, six foot four, I think is what they measure, outside. And then I have these cedar pieces here, and all I'm doing is attaching a cleat to these so that I can screw the other pieces into the cleat. Hey everybody, Matt with the Low Cash Homestead. We are uh, working inside the high tunnel today. Let me show you what we're doing. All right, so this is just a little box I made out of some slab wood. It is much smaller than everything else because it's not dimensional lumber. I kind of just used what I had, but we're just gonna put some garlic in it. Uh, we filled the box with, there was a couple bags of uh, hardwood mulch that I had left over, so I put those on the bottom on top of the cardboard, so it's cardboard. Cardboard, hardwood mulch. We threw a 10-10-10 on top of the hardwood mulch to get that nutrient uh, down in the base layer and also to help decompose that uh, that mulch. We filled it with, this is just some old castle topsoil. It's like a buck a bag. I I've, I've buy it pretty frequently whenever I'm out. If it's on clearance, then I buy it up because I am all out of commercial nursery dirt and what I mean by that is um, you know landscaping and and gardening supply yards so you uh, raise bed mixes with compost and everything like that and I'm out of that I've been out of it for a while so I just used what was left of or I just used some bad goods and then I recycled a couple of uh, carrot boxes those over there in fact uh, that I was doing test bedding with into this then we took the oscillator uh, I threw uh, same thing I always throw on there, worm castings, Epsom salt, uh, Job's organic two five three. Uh, or is it two five four? Let's see, uh, two five three. Then we took the oscillator, ground everything up. The oscillator is fantastic. The bag dirt was kind of clumpy, um, but the oscillator is fantastic for getting down in there and just breaking up clumps of stuff. So basically, it's going to rake this back over. And then when I get some time, we're going to put our garlic bulbs in here. Also, I have another wheelbarrow full of our uh, carrot bag mix, which I'm just going to use to top off some of last season's bed, starting down there with that one at the far end there, uh, close to the wine dot tractor. So we'll rake that out and get it cleaned up. And then uh, we'll probably put the rest of this carrot bed mix on that. I don't have any more large, deep boxes to grow carrots in right now. Um, but... Here's another little interesting thing here. And boom, boom, boom. I don't know how well you'll be able to see those, but right there, our Adelaide carrots are starting to pop up. And our elephant garlic in this bed is popping up. And our soft neck garlic, whoa, hey, our soft neck garlic that we put here is starting to pop up. So we're gonna fill this bed. This bed's gonna be elephant garlic and soft neck garlic. I'm not exactly sure what the ratios are gonna be yet, um, but I'll probably put the soft neck along the sides and the elephant in the middle since it's a bigger um, bigger bulb and give it a little bit more space to grow. Um, and I'm still learning garlic. There's several root crops that I'm still learning. Carrots, I'm still learning, but man, I, I tucked the soil. I pulled the soil back on on a couple of these and they are looking pretty good. Also, as I was recycling this carrot box, these carrot boxes over there, I found some carrots that I had missed. 
and I, <laughs> I, I ate them um, right out of the ground. That's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat them because really, with this soil mix here, you don't get a whole lot of stuff. You know, you don't get a whole lot of dirt or debris or anything like that on your carrots. It's a it's a fantastic soil mix, and uh, I got this general recipe for this soil mix from Bumblebee Junction. So. Um, you can see in other videos how, how we did it, but if you want the source, then um, I would say go over and check out Mark and Tina over at Bumblebee Junction and see how they make their carrot mix. And I'm just recycling this carrot mix, and I'm putting a fertilizer that has higher levels of potassium and phosphorus than nitrogen. Your root crops don't usually need a lot of nitrogen. They want the potassium and phosphorus. And we're looking into some commercial fertilizers for root crops as well. That's what we're doing today. This is Matt with the Low Cash Homestead. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hey everybody, this is Matt with the Low Cash Homestead. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, we're it's a small box that we're doing, but it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be soft nut garlic and elephant garlic in that box. And then hopefully this weekend, depending on how things are going, I'm hoping to get my son in here to uh, finish mulching this out. And let me show you a couple other things real quick. We have the complete frame of the Caterpillar Tunnel. Is It's up. It's up. It's plumbed. It's it's good to go. So even though the ground is sloping, the boughs are not because we plumbed each bough as we went along. Now, I want machinery doors on the end. Caterpillar Tunnels from Farmer's Friend don't come with that option. Uh, so I'm going to have to build uh, something and I'm going to need some supplies for that. And that's actually just going to have to wait for a minute because i got some higher priority things to do. Uh, we started filling it in with, uh, with yard waste, and I ran out of time. So that's another thing we're going to work on. I'm going to be inside for pretty much the rest of the day today. My mi micro miss is, uh, is sick, and uh, Mrs. Little Cash Homestead will be leaving here shortly. So I'm going to go in and have to tend to micro miss. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And then one other thing I wanted to show you is we're starting to get some sprouts out of our little um, tube system here, our little tube aquaponic system. And I just put um, a little bit of fish fertilizer and a little bit of Super Thrive down in the tank. you got to know what size tank you have. That's 28 liters. And um, so you can calculate how much uh, you'll need based on that. So I just put a little bit of fish emulsion in there. I check the tank every couple of days to make sure the water levels are high enough so that we don't burn out our pump. But we are starting to get little bits of growth in our system. Um, that one's got a little root hair coming out. I don't know how well you'll see it, but there it is. And some of these are developing. See that one there? If you can get focus. Little bits of root hair is growing. So, uh, so far... This system seems to be working. And again, this was just 108 lettuce sites. It's like 100 bucks on Amazon. So I figured it's not a huge investment. We'll give it a try. Oh, see, we got some more sprouts right there. Just starting to poke out of the growing medium. This is Matt with Low Cash Homestead. Thank you very much. Have a great day.